We're using a lemonade page from a calendar for this sign. Keep watching. All right, we're gonna start off with some flower picks. I have yellow and I will also be adding some white, the same. I'm gonna use a variety of yellow ribbon and this checked ribbon with wire and this calendar from July. And this is the farmer's market calendar. So this is what that thrips and slime looks like. It's chalkboard on one side and just plain on the other. It had some writing on it. I erased a little bit and now I'm going back over with some little chipped areas with this furniture marker in black to just cover that up and just freshen the sign up just a bit. Any little scratches, I'll just go back over it like this. No need to use chalk paint because I won't be using this for chalk writing. Next thing we need to do is trim up this sign. So we're going to remove it from the rest of the calendar. Decide how much we're going to need to remove and then start trimming it down. Fortunately, this one has a lot of, has two rows of the border on it. So conveniently enough, you can just trim right along either one of those if it's the right size you need. And it was for me. You can use some of those little rounded scissors if you want to, to get around those curves was really not that difficult to do. Then I'm going to cover this with my glue stick. I saw, I think it was Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs that said if you apply your calendars onto a black background that you won't see the lines or the grid on the other side. So that is what I have done in this project and she is exactly right. So I'm just laying this down, going to smooth it with my hands, and then the part you don't see is me smoothing it out with my wooden ruler. So I believe I cut that part out accidentally. Yes, there's my ruler laying to the side. So once that's all down and you've removed the wrinkles and bubbles, you can start taking your picks apart. I wanted to have white and yellow because I personally have a lemon tree at my house and the little flowers on here, or they're small flowers like this. They're not necessarily yellow, they're white and it's a pinkish color. Very fragrant, love them, love this tree. But I thought these flowers would look better because they look a little bit more like what you would see on a lemon tree. And of course they coordinate the white and yellow. So I'm just gonna take these and lay the stems toward each other so that I have a bunch on the left and a bunch on the right. I'm gonna move those around in a way that is pleasing to my eye. So you can just push those pieces around, pull them out for longer pieces, and then take a little bit of floor wire or tape or whatever you have, and then twist these together in the center. Next, we're gonna start on the bow, and I'm going to use this. I got this at the thrift store, believe it or not. It was a brand new roll. I believe it came from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to make a six inch tail and then just make a simple bow in my hand. I'm not using my bow maker today. I've got a mess in my scrapbook room. I mean, not my scrapbook, oh my goodness. In my crafting area because I'm sorting scrapbook and other supplies. So there is stuff everywhere. And I know it's in the pile somewhere, but I'm just not quite sure yet. So I'm just gonna make this two loop bow. These are five inch loops. And I'm going to do them on each side so that they're two on each side. One actually I think I made a little bit smaller than the other one, the one that's on top. Bunching them together in the middle and just holding that in that center so that it doesn't come loose and cutting off the excess. Just gonna make sure I have enough for two tails to hang down. Making sure that I didn't pull too hard and change the measurement of my loops there. Then I'm going to take a pipe cleaner or a chenille stem, whatever you want to call it, pull it tightly down in there and then twist it around. Okay, so I wanted to give my that soft flowy ribbon a better backing so that I can make it stand up a little bit better. So as I've done before, I'm going to put this silky like ribbon 
right on top of this burlap and this was just a scrap that I had the burlap scrap I'm not exactly sure what store I got it from but you can you know you can use Dollar Tree ribbon if you want and I'm just making some little light zigzags down here so that the glue doesn't show too much through this yellow ribbon and then trying to center it by eye as much as possible through the length of this ribbon go all the way down zigzag very lightly and then press it down and then once it's cooled and it is set up you have this nice wired ribbon so same thing here I'm just gonna pinch up right where I have my my six inch tail I'm gonna pinch and twist my ribbon to make my first loop I'm checking my measurements so I want this to be the same size as the bow that I already have made twisted in the middle because you want that pretty side to be on top so that's why we twist in the middle so now I have my little two loop bow to go on top so there you go for that you can go ahead and wrap that if you want but since I have it in my hand nice and secure I'm going to go ahead and add it right onto this black and white bow I'm just going to unwrap that by holding it very very steady and then twist them both together I'm going to twist them together spin it around to the back and put the bulk of that knot twist 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 in the back you can trim that off if you want but I'm going to use this as part of my hanger on the back so fluff the bow you know this makes a world of difference because what you see when you first put it down is not going to bring you the joy that it will after you have arranged it purposefully and gotten it ready for presentation so we're going to take those tails on the black and white and on the polka dot ribbon and just trim those down and dovetail them whoops see there almost did it wrong you ever do that when you're crafting you you look at it and you go what am i what 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 am i doing i don't know why that gave me so much trouble in that moment i could have been distracted could have just happened it does happen Lots of times when I'm crafting, my kids are in the room with me or my husband will come downstairs and I just, I'm so deeply into what I'm doing that the smallest distraction just takes me out of the moment. I forget where I'm at when I go back to it. Oh, scatterbrained. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and use that pipe cleaner to attach it to the floral piece that I have, the floral swag. Fluffing again, moving around, getting it where I want it. I leave these parts in guys because it is important that you understand to get the final result you want you have to take your time and touch every piece of that I think it was Ramon at home that said you should touch every piece touch every piece like when you're fluffing a Christmas tree every single piece every branch everything has to be touched okay so I'm just twisting it around in the back you can simply make that into a hanger if you'd like or I could just hang it with the open area at the top there if I wanted Okay, so now I'm gonna start adding in the rest of my flowers that I wanna put here so that it covers up this, this little blank area. Just wanna fill it out. So this is just kind of my little dry run and I just kinda of poke them in there and see where I might wanna want them. Want to put them, want to wanna want them. And I, yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna keep adding those in where I want them, like so. Y'all forgive me. I really need some more coffee this morning. And I have a variety, and I really like these little, I really like the airiness of these picks. I was fortunate enough that these did come from Goodwill, and I have no idea how much these would have cost me at a craft store, but they're just beautiful. I love them. Love them very much. And these particular picks, both of them had little pieces of fern and and things like that on them so that was nice and the little buds on the ends little like they're just blooming in the springtime but actually for me lemons you could leave those up the entire summer which is exactly how I intend to decorate my house for summer 
short of changing it up a little bit for the 4th of July because we usually do something special for that um, yeah I'm I'm loving the the yellow and white this year we need some brightness we need some joy we need some light it's a new year I'm healthy I'm alive my family as well got to move towards some brightness so here she is all finished And I'm giving it a good look, all sides and directions. I'm telling you, pick it up, look at it all over the place, look for spots that need a little extra embellishment, and then fix it up. Do you see the little hole there where the calendar hangs? Up toward the top of your screen now, you can see it. I did go back with a white paint pen or a paint marker and fill that in so that it blends in a little bit better and it doesn't just stand out as a calendar page with a hole in it. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you bring some brightness into your house this spring and summer and some joy any way that you can. Thank you to all my subscribers. We have passed 500 people, 500 family members. I am so excited and so forever grateful. Share this with someone who would appreciate it and I'll see you again soon. Bye.